I'm going to just give sort of, so here's kind of my, my target as it were. So it's contemporary theories of instrumental rationality. And contemporary theories of instrumental rationality, they, they kind of are kind of what you can call kind of mental states events first. Like they take the, the central con concepts or the central ontological categories, they tend to be mental states or events like preferences, desires, intentions, decisions, choice. So you see in uh, orthodox decision theory, preferences and decisions are the central uh, topics. Sometimes in more informal instrumental theories of rationality, desires and intentions take the same role. role. Uh, they, they also take for, for momentary states, the relevant states tend to be uh, time fly states, decisions, intentions at, at, a, at a specific time, uh, preferences at, at, a, at a kind of a specific moment. Uh, and, and so when we, we look at instrumental rationality, we're looking at the relations between mental states and the rationality of action in general is derivative. I mean, if, now you need some kind of conception and action is, is rational, it conforms to an intention that is rationally formed or something like that, or, or uh, an action that corresponds to a decision, to a rational decision is rational. Uh, and now when, when it looks to, to extended agents, see, so that's the relation between the momentary states and the intention of, the rationality of the momentary state and the rationality of the action. And the relation between the rationality of the momentary actions and the extended action, they are gonna generally be relations between momentary states at different time slices. Some theories are just like, Paul Weirich has this great quote that, that I love, that sort of the rationality of swimming across uh, between Paris and London, so Paris, uh, France and England, uh, is determined by the, whether each, at each moment that I'm swimming, I don't know if you guys can see my gestures of swimming, it's each time I'm swimming, uh, 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 that at each moment is the rational decision at that moment from beginning to end. Uh, uh, and, and, and some other theories like take the diachronic rationality as important, but these, those then should be relations between different time slices, as opposed to be just by the nature of the action that extends through time. So if the rational relations are rational relations between extended beings, beings that, that sort of are better characterized as having time intervals rather than momentary, the being momentary. Uh, so, so here sort of, uh, I, I think of my work always as trying to lead us back to the 18th century. Uh, and so I kind of go into sort of like uh, uh, the classical conceptions of instrumental rationality that I favor, First, they, they, they generally took to be basically a single principle of instrumental rationality, the principle of instrumental reasoning, that you must pursue the, the means to, to your ends. Or, uh, so it connects actions, which is going to be typically going to describe as pursuing an end, intentionally pursuing an end. Two other actions is the actions of pursuing these means. And since actions are, are temporarily extended, uh, so we, the principle applies directly to objects that extend through time and to the actions themselves. So, so the, it's not a, either a time slice theory, it doesn't look at things as time slice, not a diachronic theory of rationality because it doesn't, it's not interesting the relation between time slices. What is interest is already extended in time. And, and one of the, the, the uh, consequences, this is kind of an important consequence in the book, is that it's gonna be uh, 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 that, that kind of shows that this way of approach is essentially different this is going to be a non supervenience of the rationality of extended agents on moment to moment rationality. So that an agent could be at each moment rational and irrational through the same period of time. Uh, so it could be rational at t0, t1, t2, tn, but irrational in the interval between t0 and tn. So, uh, um, so just a few caveats, because uh, one caveat is going to be important when we're talking to the, the comments is that it's not an evaluative theory in the sense that, uh, um, it, it, that sometimes people talk about just evaluating what the agent is a rational agent, but it's gonna be what sometimes people think as a, a guiding conception of rationality, a rationality that, uh, uh, that tries to describe how the agent is guided. Sometimes they prefer the idea as, as being explanatory. The theory actually explains when a rational agent acts well, what, what happened in terms of the agent's capacities, rational capacities. Uh, uh, so the the uh, um, uh, so so now now going I, I think you're going to skip most of so oh sorry I'm just going to say there would be three categories that I try to characterize like all theories of rationality instrumental rationality has happened 
One is what I call the basic given attitudes, what they take to be basic, that it cannot be rationally criticized in a theory of instrumental rationality. So it's going to be the basic preferences, basic desires or intentions, depending on the view, view on, the, on the contemporary views. Uh, standard exercise, what is an exercise of, of, your, of, of your rational capital? What's an uh, of your rational agency? In, and in, in most contemporary theories of rationality, there's going to be choices, decisions, or intentions. And then what I call principles of derivation or coherence, how you move, how instrumental rationality determines that you move from one uh, 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 state, one attitude to another, or uh, what makes those attitudes coherent or incoherent according to the theory of rationality. And just yeah, very quickly, in the extended theory, what's, what's special and different is the way it follows classical conceptions of instrumental rationality, that the basic given attitudes are intentional actions, that are in particular the intentional pursuit of ends. The standard exercises are also intentional actions, also the, the, extended per, the intentional pursuit of something, which is going to be as means through ends. They, they, they are, the ends are indeterminate and the means, and, and typically, but not always, the means are, are indeterminate uh, and they always extend through time. Uh, the, the principle of derivation is only the principle of instrumental reasoning and the principle in co of coherence they take to follow from the principle of derivation is there is no, no incompatible ends. Like you cannot, an, uh, a rational agent has no incompatible ends. Um, so just very, the, the advantages, the things that practical rationality really goes all the way to the action. It's not, the action doesn't just conform to what's more properly speaking, rational, uh, an exercise of rational agency. Uh, extended rationality it cannot, doesn't drop, is not accounted in terms of, uh, of moment by moment rationality, it's not a function of moment by moment rationality. These we, like contexts in which you have indeterminate ends don't require a precisification. We don't, we don't need to precisify our attitudes before we start a theory of rationality. Uh, and unlike, it, 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 this is, I'm not going to explain much about that, but just say that it's not necessarily non-ideal as many, for instance, in orthodox decision theory. I think that uh, rational agency is necessary, human agency is necessarily non-ideal. Uh, and, you know, if it's just merely contingently non-ideal. And uh, just, I'm just going to say this very quickly because it comes up in some of the comments. How does it act? Like, what are the problems of this classical conception? What's the advantage of or, or seems to think that does badly compared to the compare, con, contemporary theories, it, because it doesn't have any comparative attitudes, it's basic attitudes just to pursue the end, as opposed, for instance, to orthodox decision theory that talks in terms of preferences. Uh, and the back, and background assumption is, is that knowledge that when like the, the most, the basic part of the theory looks in terms of how, how the rational agent acts rationally in terms of what she knows, uh, it seems that the, the theory was going to have no room for risk, ignorance, and certainty. And in particular in this area, it doesn't have the kind of power of decision theory of explaining what is rational for an agent in, in situations of risks. And I just say that part of the, 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 the uh, a, a large chunk of the tactic of the book in kind of gaining back the power of decision theory is piggybacking on decision theory and saying like, uh, 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 although like uh, uh, in, in when exactly what I want to say when it's most plausible, there are going to be some preferences. There's going to, I just, ah, I'm kind of running out of time. So it's going to, there's some preferences that are going to be internal to the ends we have. So for instance, if I have an end of building a house, there's some ways of building a house that are better or worse. So in relative to this end, there's going to have a preference ordering. There's going to be some, what I call Pareto preferences that, that sort of preference because some actions uh, 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 actualize many of my ends at once, while the, the alternative action doesn't uh, realize any of my ends. So I tend to prefer for uh, actions that, that realize more uh, my ends than ones that don't. There'll be reflective preferences, things that in, upon reflection, I give priority to an end over another. And, um, the, and, and in particular, there's gonna be this kind of general, I, don't, I didn't put it here, a reflective end of pursuing my happiness which is just a pursuit of all my ends. And there'll be general means that we have, I, that we have much more structure, like pursuit of wealth, that, uh, uh, that will be kind of particularly good to form preferences that conform to decision theory. And that is where decision theory seems to be most powerful. So, so, so the theory inherits decision theory's advantages where there are any, and, and disavows it when it, when it, when it does, gives you 
bad results and misunderstands human rationality. And just the last thing, I think it's the last thing I want to say, is this idea like uh, uh, of that uh, revising the, the, our ends in the context of ignorance, what the, the way I try to, try to understand is that when I realize I, I don't know whether one of my ends I can achieve, the, uh, then it's basically, the theory says nothing about the right way to revise my ends, but there's a minimal revision. I can move from having this as an end to trying to realize, and I kind of want to be, I have as my end of being a millionaire in the middle of my philosophical career, I realize that's not really something that I can ensure just by publishing mediocre papers. So, uh, 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 so I now, now kind of have to revise this kind of to my minimal reviews that are going to try to become a millionaire. Um, so, uh, uh, and, and, and just very quickly, there's sort of two senses of trying, like uh, 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 one, I could do anything that would count as trying. I can, can just, uh, if you give me $10, if I try to dance the tango, and I can, I, uh, uh, and I can, ju I just go like this. I don't know if you can see and say that. There, I tried. Uh, 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 and, and then we are my $10 and say, well, no, that's not what I meant. I meant really tried. And I take really tried or sort of like trying your best. Uh, what I, what I think, what uh, tends, gives the internal structure to the, to the notion of trying that's, that's going to be important for my ends is going to, Come out, so it's gonna is that there, uh, the the notion of trying rather than trying is that uh, uh, is that the the it inherits the internal structure of the end. So so I kind of just as becoming a millionaire, there are, there are better and worse ways of becoming a millionaire. The more more money is a better way of becoming a millionaire. Two million dollars is a better way of becoming a millionaire than having a million dollars. Trying to become a millionaire then it's gonna be that sort of. Uh, it, this, this preserves this internal structure. It's a better thing if I attempt to go for the lotto that gives me $2 million than the one that gives me a million dollars if the chances are equal. Okay, I think that's, uh, that, that's about it. <laughs>